Good Sunday morning and welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. Thanks for joining us this morning. Here are some headlines that we're following for you on your Sunday. Today is Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. There's an event happening at Lincoln Veterans Memorial Park. It's being hosted by families who've been affected by fentanyl use. There's free naloxone and fentanyl prevention information. It's from 11 until 2. Tattoo artists are raising money for abortion access today. If you're interested, you can head down, pick out a tattoo, and the entire cost of your session will be going to Cobalt Advocates. The artists at Fallen Owl Tattoo Studio will be available today in Lakewood, and that is from 11 until 4. And today is the last day of Littleton's Western Week. The grand finale, a duck race down Little Creek. The rubber duckies will swim down the creek towards the Prince Street Bridge. Registration starts at noon and the race is at one. You can pay $5 per duck or $25 for a six quack. And there are cash prizes for the top four duckies. We're taking a look outside right now. Things are dry this morning. We're seeing clouds and we're seeing a little bit of the sun peeking through. This is coming after a stormy afternoon yesterday. It got a little wet at times. You're right, the sun though peeking out this morning and it's gonna clear up a little here within the next couple of hours. Beautiful shot from City Park, mid to upper 60s uh, here early this morning. It's been a nice warm up here within the last hour. We do have some showers in the northern and central mountains right now. And also again, another round of flash flood watch is. This has been a pretty common scenario for us near some of the burn scars as we see again more of that monsoon moisture uh, in place for the next 24 to about 36 hours. So expecting to see more storms pop up here by early afternoon with some pockets again of heavy rain. It'll be a, a touch on the cooler side again today. Upper 70s to low 80s for highs. Those numbers will drop as soon as you get a few showers rolling through, but highs will be right around 83 in Denver, Fort Collins, Greeley, low to mid 80s, more 60s than 70s in the central mountains. Coming up, I'll take you through our future cast. I'll show you how that uh, rain activity is going to roll through. Plus, we have your full work week forecast on the Super 7 day. All right, Lisa, thank you. Well, showing support for shooting victims as they continue to heal and asking for answers after Denver police opened fire into a crowd last month. Those were the main goals from a protest in the metro last night. Denver 7's Christian Lopez reports. Dozens of demonstrators packed the streets here in Lodo last night during a protest. They are asking for the three police officers who were involved in the shooting to be held accountable. They also did this to show their support for the six innocent bystanders who were hurt, as well as the suspect, Jordan Wadi. They started the protest at Commons Park before making their way over 20th and Larimer. They also confronted a group of police officers that they found along the way. They want the Denver District Attorney to skip the grand jury process and prosecute the three officers that fired into that crowd. The grand jury will decide whether the DPD officers involved should be charged. If the jury doesn't decide to charge the officers, then it's called a no bill and the officers won't have to go to trial. The suspect Jordan Wadi is facing several charges in this case. Protesters told us they're upset and they want to see something done. Uh, we're outraged at the mass shooting by the Denver police. There's no solution at the ballot box isn't going to work. Calling your congressperson isn't going to work. Uh, we're going to have to do it ourselves. There's also an internal investigation taking place within the Denver Police Department. Those details will then go to the Use of Force Board for review. Meanwhile, three of the six bystanders who were hurt just spoke publicly for the first time a few days ago, saying that they are still recovering from both the emotional and physical impacts that this has caused them. Reporting in Lodo this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Yes, and Christian bystanders hurt during that shooting say it's a night that they will never forget. They were all outside Larimer Beer Hall and a crowd of people as officers responded to a fight. Some of the innocent people hurt in the exchange are sharing their perspectives after police released body camera video on Tuesday. One victim can't even bring himself to watch it just yet. I'm still dealing with the, with the healing process of what took place that day. Uh, physically and mentally. Um, I'll eventually watch it. Everything happened so quickly and in one of the videos you can very clearly see that the suspect had dropped the weapon before shots were fired. And as a civilian, if I was to d be in that situation or I shot a bullet in that you know, situation, I would have been immediately, publicly everywhere and held accountable. One of the shooting victims has nerve damage to his hand because of the incident. A grand jury will now decide whether the three officers involved should face charges. 
This morning, a 13 year old boy is dead and another teen is still recovering following a drive by shooting at a park in Longmont. Denver 7 spoke to two people who lived on the street where that shooting happened. One witness held the 15 year old who police say is expected to survive. He was shot in the leg. The 13 year old was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. He was worried about his brother and he kept saying his leg hurt. He was gasping, my husband said. I heard four shots a pause and then two shots. One witness says he saw two cars leave the scene. Police say they have made contact with a person of interest in that shooting. If you are a witness or have surveillance video from the area, Longmont police are asking you to give them a call on their tip line. That number is 303-774-3700. Police would not confirm if they have anyone in custody and will bring you the latest as we learn more. As more students head back to school this week, there are some big changes coming to RTD's bus routes today. Not all kids ride the big yellow school bus to school. There are many students who use RTD buses as their school bus, and this is to help them out. It's totally separate from the free rides RTD is offering this month. RTD is reinstating some school trip or service routes, and they're also adding some extra buses to help out students in Boulder so that they can get to and from CU. RTD told us they're also making other timing adjustments. We base it a lot on traffic patterns, so when there's a large increase in traffic, we want to adjust our timing so that way we don't miss those transfers. You can see the list of these new changes on the RTD website. If you know of a change that you would like, then go to RTD customer line and suggest it. They do have a number on their website, which is rtd-denver.com. RTD's free mall ride detour is extending today. The shuttle will continue to run during the 16th Street Mall project, which means it'll be rerouted to 15th and 17th Streets. That's three additional blocks. Construction of the 16th Street Mall project is happening in phases, so detours are going to change as this project continues on. There are a lot of horses in need in our state. Just feeding them is going to be a massive bill. Thanks to our Denver 7 Gives viewers, their futures are looking a bit more stable. And a little later, how often is a grand jury pulled into an investigation? I'm breaking down the typical kinds of cases that they're put onto and what this could mean for DPD officers in the future.